for our second video, uh, v Vim for Beginners, we'll go over um, starting it and getting things configured. Because if they're not configured correctly, it's almost uh, unusable and, and very uh, frustrating. Um, when you start uh, Vim, the file you put after Vim is the one it will open immediately into the text editor. So we've opened up uh, Vim and there's a f what we're going to look for here is the configuration file. Um, if you hit uh, escape or control C and you type uh, colon you can then type the word uh, version and that will tell you via these directories here where it's going to search for your VIMRC file which is the configuration that it'll run under. Now the tricky part with this is it doesn't look in each one of these directories and say oh I'm gonna use the configuration options you've set for each one once it finds a VIMRC file, it uses it and it ignores it if it's in somewhere else where it might look subsequently. So to find which one is in use, you can type script names and see, okay, when, VI, when Vim runs, uh, get all these scripts loaded. Here's the vimrc file and that I know is in the directory that I'm currently in. Um, it may not, if you've just started vim, it may not have one listed. It might not have found one. Um, if you do echo my vimrc, it's showing I'm on SigWin, so its file system listing is showing up like if you were in Linux or Unix. And it says slash home slash dot vi mrc is where the file is. So you do a colon o for open dot vi mrc and this uh, is my mrc file per of particular. Um, of relevance to something you may want to add and create in your file is um, these things. You'll do setting up saying it's behave like it's in Microsoft Windows, set you no know, compatible. Um, don't worry about that for now, but if you're a developer, you're probably going to want to immediately change the tabs to this will make it so the tabs are, are, are a space not an actual tab. Um, so this is spaces of size 4, which is what I'm used to on this and every other system I use. Um, this puts the line numbers on the left side, which you see are already there. The syntax highlighting, which if you've just started it from scratch, you probably won't have um, if you're editing Perl, Java, PHP, HTML, um, it'll notice it and and um, do the highlighting accordingly. The color scheme, these are built-in color schemes. I'm, I prefer a dark background. Um, there's all different, um, you can look up on the VIM wiki of different color schemes, try them out. And if you're in the GVIM client, it, from the menu you can just go and select color schemes to get a feel for what the different ones look like. Um, I like to get the window bigger right away. It's usually too small and also to get the font bumped up. The monitors now are high enough resolution where if you let it start under its normal defaults things are just really really small. Um, for um, developing you may want to add something like this. This is defining um, I've got SIGWIN set up. It uses the GNU compiler for C++, make, and then to run it, um, I'll add this here, just 
we'll go over this later what some of those settings are col escape colon wq means um, write and then quit that should take care of your basic configuration to get it set up the way you want to behave like you would expect it to um, you can see with the syntax highlighting um, the C++ code looks um, the, ch the different um, parts of the code stand out a lot more um, and that's it uh, then we'll move on to our next lesson.